Hello, and welcome to Verbling. Hi there, I am Teacher Oakley. For the next hour here on Verbling, we will be learning vocabulary to describe facial features. Not only will we learn very basic beginner vocabulary for the nouns which describe the face, but also we'll be learning uh, adjectives, verbs, and collocations that we use when we describe or talk about someone's facial features. We will be doing that through a mix of different types of exercises, mix and match, and fill in the blank, as well as some general discussion as we go along. Uh, in addition, I'll be bringing up any other maybe related idioms or uh, collocation or, or or uh, expressions and things of that nature as we go along. Uh, okay, let me uh, go ahead and start welcoming students to the class. Hello, Felipe. Hello, teacher. Hello, how are you? I'm tired, um, but <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, welcome to the class. Uh, hello, Carl. Uh, welcome. Hello, Carlos. How are you today? Hello, teacher. I'm uh, fine morning. today. Morning. I mean evening. Whatever. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the class. Keiko has joined us. Uh, hello, Keiko. <coughs> hello, teacher. Hello. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm very well, thank you. And you? Uh, I'm doing okay. Just starting out my day. So hopefully you guys will kind of help wake me up. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, uh, all right. Looks like we've been joined by Marcus. Hello, Marcus. Hello, Oakley. How are you? I'm fine, Marcus. Nice to have you back in the class again. Uh, okay, now we've got students piling in. Um, okay, hello. good morning, Heidi. Hello, nice to see you again. Hello, Heidi, good to see you again. Uh, and uh, also, hello to Carolina. Welcome to the class. Hi, teacher, how are you? All right, I'm fine, thank you very much. Okay, one by one. Um, Okay, uh, looks like Carvalho has joined us. Hello, Carvalho. Welcome. Hi, teacher. Hi. Long time no see. How are you doing? I'm doing great, teacher. And you? I'm doing all right. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Good to see you, here. too. Back here again. Okay, and uh, Philip has joined us. Hello, Philip. Nice to see you, teacher. All right, good to see you. And there we go. Looks like we're full up now. As Jonathan has joined us. Good, good morning. Good evening. Whatever. Hi, Jonathan. <laughs> Hi. Good night. <laughs> good night. All right. Uh, okay. Uh, hi, guys. All right, we're going to start off doing very basic mix and match type exercise. Uh, in a second, I'll do a little screen share with you. Here's what we're going to do. Well, uh, you can take a look here. Simple mix and match with pictures here. Uh, quite basic. We're going to look at the parts of the head and the face. Uh, hair, eyelid, lips, chin, tongue, etc. Um, here's the list. I'll scroll back up if I need to, but let's see if we can uh, manage this without the prompts. Let's look at some pictures and uh, all right, here we go. Identifying parts of the face. Okay, Felipe, number one. Here we go. What's this yes. thing? <laughs> yes, Peter, number one is um. Ah, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Philip. Y yes, teacher. Uh, hang on, I'm I'm trying to talk to Felipe. Mm, okay. Different student. Uh, 
Okay. Item number one is the most touch. Okay. N not so strong a vowel sound. Mustache. 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 Yeah, the here the um, stress is on the second syllable, so mustache. Tash right. goes high. Mustache. Uh, yes. Uh, Felipe, have you ever had a mustache? No, <laughs> I don't have mustache. <laughs> No? No. You, you think you will ever grow a mustache? Yes, um, in the future, maybe. Maybe? Maybe. Big, big one with the curls, like this one, that has huge curls on the ends? <laughs> no, of course not. No? Okay, well, this, this kind of mustache, just so you know, think about, like, uh, handlebars on a bike, on a motorcycle or a bicycle. This is called a handlebar mustache, actually. And uh, Okay, the verb we use, you grow a mustache. Um, okay. Uh, all right, uh, moving on to Carlos. Number two. Carlos, what's that? Uh, tooth. Tooth. Teeth. Right. What do you call one of them? <laughs> teeth is plural for many. Hopefully, you have many teeth. <laughs> what is the singular? Uh, tooth. Tooth. Very good. Okay. Uh, you you know how you compliment a a redneck girl? This is an American joke. You know how to compliment on a redneck girl, Carlos? No, I don't. I don't know what to do. You say to her, nice tooth. <laughs> uh, instead of teeth. Get it? Get it? Okay, never mind. All right. Terrible joke. Uh, okay, moving on. Keiko. Uh, where's number three? We've lost three. Oh, my gosh. Okay, we're skipping around a bit. All right, number three is here. We're in the area of the mouth here. Lips. All right. Very good. Uh, okay. Who is a famous celebrity with big lips? Do you know any famous celebrities that have big lips? Yes. You know, for example... Um. Rihanna. Rihanna? Does she? Rihanna. Oh, okay. Yeah, I know her. All right. <laughs> sure. Okay. I was thinking Mick Jagger for men. And, uh, <laughs> no, teacher. Um, Shakira. Uh, Shakira? Yeah, she kind of yeah. Also, somebody who mentioned uh, Carvalho, Angelina, that's who I was thinking of, too. Angelina Jolie. Definitely. Has those big pouty lips. Yeah, okay, there you go. Carvalho, those kind of lips that look like uh, Angelina Jolie wants to kiss everyone she sees. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Um, she has pouty lips. They look like... Uh, um, looks like she's going to cry or something because her lips are pursed. She has pouty lips. Lips are pursed. When you get your lips in kissing position... You purse your lips. That's a verb, to purse your lips. Okay. Uh, moving on. Um, Marcus, uh, number four. Oh, wait, let me scroll up a little. All right, let's talk about this. My uh, like a fungus. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. I don't remember his name. Uh, Looks like some kind of seaweed there on his face. <laughs> Not sure. Uh, beard, 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 no. Very good. Uh, beard, yes. Beard, yes. Beard, yes. Uh, that's right. Um, now he, this example, he has kind of a specific type of beard. Uh, the kind of beard where you only grow it on the end of your chin, just on your chin only. Do you know what that's called? See, he has not, no hair on his 
cheeks on his face, just only on his chin. Uh, do you know what that's called, Marcus? No. Okay, that would be a goatee. 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 Go Goatee, yeah. If you can picture in your mind, picture a billy goat, a male goat. It has a male goat has that kind of hair coming off the end of his chin, kind of oh, like okay. that. Goat. <laughs> okay. Goatee. There you go. Goatee. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. And um, all right. Moving on. Uh, Heidi, I already gave it away. Really, I just said it. But Heidi, what's what are these sides of the face here? Cheeks. Right. Cheeks. You have two cheeks. Of course, you can use singular. One one cheek, two cheeks. Uh, okay. Um, Heidi, do you know another part of your body... <laughs> I'm going to get myself in trouble. Another part of your body you use cheeks for. Yeah. I don't know. No, no, no. Okay, we also use this word to talk about our butt. <laughs> the part of our body we sit down on. You have two cheeks on your butt. So. <laughs> okay, so we, we use the same word, cheeks, for our face and our butt in English. That's crazy, I know, but it's true. It's very true. Uh, okay. What's that? Buttock. Buttock? Buttock. Buttock. Yeah. But of course we say buttocks with a with an S. Right. Ah, okay. Buttocks. You know, you know there's kind of two parts. Maybe both, both, <laughs> both cheeks have um, uh, dimples. <laughs> oh, very good. Okay. Oh. I didn't really think when I started this lesson I'd be talking about dimples on somebody's butt. But here we are. Okay. All right. Dimples. Very good, Heidi. Uh, very much a related word we should know. Dimples are those... Uh, um, dimples are the kind of... I don't know. How can I say it? A, a hole? Not really a hole. But um, a pit. Uh, a small indentation there that forms like when you smile, you might have dimples on your face. And you may have dimples on your butt. I don't know. Let's not talk about it. Um, okay. Carvalho, yes, dancing cheek to cheek is a very common expression. And, of course, that means dancing with face to face, with faces touching, like slow dancing. Of course, that doesn't mean dancing with your butts touching. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. All right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yes, dancing cheek to cheek uh, means usually slow romantic dancing. Uh, okay. Let's move on before I get myself into more trouble. Uh, Carolina. Carolina, number six. Nose. Okay, that's a nose. All right. Um Carolina, in your country, do people get nose surgery? Yes, of course. They do? Do you know what that's yes. called in English? Uh, endoplastic. Wow, that's very close. Because it, it, it's the, the, the name in Spanish is rhinoplastia. It's, well, it's pretty much the same in, in English, rhinoplasty. Yeah, yeah. rhinoplasty. Which I always thought was very funny because, of course, rhino is the short abbreviation for rhinoceros. Rhinoceros, yeah. Yeah, kind of funny. Okay. The pronunciation is rhinoplasty? Yeah, it's very similar. Okay. Extremely similar to Spanish, apparently. Okay. Yeah. All right, thanks. Uh, Carvalho, how about uh, number eight? Tongue. Tongue. Okay. Uh, okay. This is a, a word. Okay. It gets very confusing when we have NGs in English. Um, not that this is. Well, yes, it is an NG. 
Um, words with the N, letter N, letter G combination are confusing because, of course, when we say finger, you hear the G, the, you hear the G sound. But um, when we say tongue, there's notice, if you listen carefully when I say tongue, there's no G in English. All right? So no G. Okay, okay right. that should. Just tongue. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, Carvalho, is it rude to stick out your tongue in your culture? I don't think so, Teach. I really? think it's not a problem, yes. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, all right. In English culture, especially English speaking culture, uh, little children, kids, when they're mad at another little kid, or, or their mother, maybe, it's. Very rude, but they will stick out their tongue. Okay, uh, okay. I think in this case it can be. Oh, okay. All right. Can be rude. Okay, yeah. Right. Okay. So same thing. All right. Uh, moving on. Philip. Now, Philip. Philip. Over there in Montreal, Philip. Nine. Yes. Eyebrow. Eyebrow. Okay, very good. Eyebrow, eyebrow. Um, Philip, have you ever, any of those Montreal women, have you seen any of those Montreal women that pluck their eyebrows? Yes, and, many of them. Many of them, of course. Yeah, I know that to be true. Um, and then they, sometimes they pluck their eyebrows, they pull the hair out. Okay. Yes. They pluck their eyebrows and then sometimes they paint them back on again. <laughs> uh, okay. They pluck their eyebrows and then they paint their eyebrows. Uh, have you ever seen the women that pluck all of the hair out of their eyebrows and then paint them on? Mm. You witnessed that before? Have you seen that? I have. It's very silly looking. Okay. Not a synonym to to shave. To shave. Well, they don't know. It's not a synonym. Okay, I should explain. I'm glad you said that. Shave is like men shave their beard and mustache. They cut the hair. Mm. Uh, to pluck is to actually use tweezers and pull the hair out. Just okay. yank it out. Mm. Okay. So, like, two different actions completely. Two, two different things going on there. All right. Uh, okay. Okay, moving on. Jonathan? Number right. 10. Number 10. Uh, ear. Of course, that's your ear. Uh, all right. Um, Jonathan, Jonathan, do people in your country make fun of people with big ears? Yes, they <laughs> say to them Dumbo. <laughs> Dumbo, like the elephant. Dumbo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, same thing in English, actually. Okay, and make <laughs> all kinds of jokes. Actually, I say that to my brother. He has very <laughs> big <laughs> ears. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, okay. Well, yeah, it's very common to make fun of people's big ears. Uh, okay. All right, moving on. Felipe, back to you. What's this? Above the eye. Uh, what number two? Number eleven. Here. Eleven uh, is um, eyelid. I, I is it? <laughs> I. Is it? Uh, okay. Yeah, it could be. I, I can't. T oh yeah, I guess it is eyelid. You're right. Eyelid. All right. And if you close both your eyelids at once. What's that called? What's the verb? Mm. When everybody I does it, it's natural. Blink. Blink. Uh. Okay. Uh, if you close one eyelid, uh, what's that? Um. Well, Jonathan has guessed it already. If you close one at a time, 
There you go. That is to wink. 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 Okay. One one eye. You close one eye. Uh, all right. Felipe, do do men ever wink at pretty girls? <laughs> or yes. Okay. Or maybe at little kids. Or maybe if you have a secret with somebody, you can't say <laughs> anything out loud. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? Okay. All right. So kind of a, a body language. Um, all right. If uh, What does it mean, Felipe, if I say, uh, don't blink? Uh, like in a deal, negotiating. Maybe coming to an agreement on a price. What does it mean? Don't blink. Um, Do you have any idea? Uh, don't trust nobody. Maybe. Mm, not exactly. Uh, no, there's a concept in English if you blink that you show that you're not sure or you show that you're going to back down that uh, you're nervous or that maybe you will back down in a deal or you know like a gunfight you shouldn't blink uh, just stare at your opponent and never blink if you blink it shows that you have self-doubt or you're nervous there's this concept in English uh, so, if you have any kind of confrontation, you, you might hear someone say, don't blink. Um, ah, interesting, Jonathan, really? Uh, don't blink means get to work? Ah, okay. That's interesting. Because uh, in English, it means don't show you that you're nervous, basically. Uh, okay. Well, uh, 12 is pretty obvious, I guess. Carlos, number 12. I don't get this. Uh, lips. 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 Lips, yeah. Maybe Maybe mouth. I don't know. Uh, okay, mouth. Yeah, because we, uh, we already saw number three was lips. Very clearly was lips. So I guess we're just talking about mouth. Here. All right. Uh, Carlos, what does it mean if somebody has a big mouth? Not literally a big mouth. Okay, I think um, a person that, that has a big mouth is like uh, uh, that, uh, they, he or she has uh, big uh, lips. Um, <laughs> And also, uh, great, um, big, uh, uh, only big, big um, tips. Well, okay, it, it also has an abstract meaning, and most English speakers, if they say, he has a big mouth, um, okay, as Carvalho suggested, probably means they gossip too much. They talk too much. They spread rumors. They like to talk a lot. So probably rather than mean the actual physically having big lips, it probably means uh, someone that talks way too much. Um, it's definitely negative, Jonathan. If I say he's got a big mouth, that's not a positive thing. That's, that says he talks way too much. It could also mean that the person cannot, which is a side effect of gossipy, I suppose, it could mean that the person cannot keep a secret. Secret. Don't tell him he's got a big mouth. Oh, you can't tell him a secret. He's got a big mouth. Uh, so, yeah, as far as someone that you don't respect, well, yes, it's definitely negative. Um, so this is a very common expression, by the way. So more than likely, if you hear an English speaker say that, that's what they're talking about, not their actual physicality, their actual physical 
mouth. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, Keiko, number th lucky number thirteen. Hair. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. We'll get into hair more. Different types of hair. What kind of hair do you have, Keiko? Straight hair, wavy hair, blonde hair, brown hair, curly hair, crazy hair. Wait. <laughs> Wavy fair hair, teacher. Wavy fair hair. Okay. Very good. All right. Excellent. And anyway, uh, we'll talk about that a little later, either today or tomorrow. We'll talk about hair because there's a lot of adjectives that go with hair. Um, Marcus, number 14. Uh, number 14, Chen. Chen, okay. Marcus, what does it mean if somebody has a double chin? Double chin? The, I think the big, big chin. Yeah, probably kind of overweight or fat. It appears that they have two chins because there's fat hanging down from under their, under their chin and it looks like they have two or double chins. Oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> Okay. Uh, we can also say somebody has a square chin. Uh, okay. W what does it mean? Uh, what is the difference? We often in English talk about a strong chin, which would probably be a square chin, and a weak chin. Can you, can you think of somebody who has a strong chin or a square chin? Uh, Trust maybe. Negger. Who? Arnold Schwarzenegger or Rambo? Yeah, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is exactly who I was thinking of. Yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone, some of those tough guy uh, action movie heroes. Many of them have a very strong chin, especially Arnold. Yes. Uh, exactly who I was thinking of when I asked that question. Right. Very good. A, a weak chin is kind of a, um, a chin that is a little pointy, um, not very well pronounced, maybe even goes in instead of sticks out. All right. I am not sure why we're getting 15 again. We already talked about cheeks, so I'm just going to skip that. Uh... Uh, okay, uh, Heidi, how about number 16? Neck. Is a neck, yeah, of course. Uh, okay, more idiomatically, what does it mean if you stick your neck out for someone? Heidi, have you ever heard that? No. No? Uh, does anybody know? I and suppose... It, I suppose it is uh, take, taking too attention to someone's to someone. Well, that's a logical. Belongs. Well, that's a logical guess because we do use uh, neck for things like paying attention to somebody or looking at somebody. I'll talk about that in just a second. Jonathan's a lot closer to help someone or do something extra, possibly at risk to yourself, to do something to help someone. Um, uh, okay, so help someone, Jonathan, is very, very good. But the the other part of it is, is that you help someone with a risk to yourself uh, is the idea. You stick your neck out. Um, kind of similar to uh, Heidi, if you if you're uh, okay, if your head or your neck is on the block, <laughs> do you know what that means? <laughs> on the block. On the block. No. Well, that's that's the yeah. If your neck is on the block or your head is on the block, that means you are responsible. You will be responsible for something. In other words, yes, it does refer to basically getting your head chopped off. <laughs> you will be found guilty. You will be held responsible. Okay. Um, Heidi, neck. 
What does it mean if you rubberneck? To Pardon? rubberneck. To rubberneck. Rubberneck. Rubber. A uh, rubber. Like boing boing. Uh, yeah. To rubberneck. Uh, this is a verb. Rubber. What does it mean? Yeah. Very soft. <laughs> <Rich>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, turn around like an owl's head all the way around. <laughs> no, that's quite an image, but not exactly. To but it is close. Actually, you're close to the idea. For example, people rubberneck when there is an accident on the highway. Mm. They slow down and they turn. They're driving forward, but they're turning their head around like an owl. <laughs> to look back at the accident. So they're slowing down and looking at something. When people generally, as a crowd, turn to look at something, uh, they are rubbernecking. Um, often they're looking at something like an accident or something that's not really good. It's kind of a little bit of a negative thing, you know, staring at an accident or somebody's getting arrested on the side of the road so people rubberneck. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. Let's do some co -look let's look at verbs. Verbs that go with some of these parts of the face and head. Uh, all right. Uh, what verbs co-locate um, with, the, with the nouns up here? We're going to look at the verbs in the box. So what co-locates with eyes, head, teeth, nose, or hair? Uh, Carolina? Okay. Um, shake your teeth? Shake your teeth? No. That's no? No. All of them. It's, everyone. Turn, it's everyone. It's, yeah. It's scratch your teeth? Scratch your teeth. No, every verb here, all five of them, co-locate with one noun, one single noun. So think about it. If you nod your what? Or shake your? Shake your head. There you go. All right. Okay, let's talk about it. Um, all right, we should talk about it basically all these verbs and when you use them. Carolina, if you turn your head, it can mean you physically, you know, move your neck and you look at something behind uh -huh. you or next to you. But if uh, if I say, what if I said uh, Carolina is a head turner? What do I mean? I don't know. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, the idea that someone is very attractive, that when you when you walk down the street, other men walking down the street will turn and look at you. You're a head turner. All right. Or I could say she really turns people's heads. All right. Basically, it means you're very attractive. All right, shake your head. Shake your head. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah. Uh, shake your head. No. <laughs> no. No. No, you shake your head no. Okay. That's from side to side. Okay. And you nod your head yes. That's up and down. Okay. So, you see this frequently, like in writing, in a story, you're reading a story, he shook his head. That means he's saying no, or he's expressing no through body language. If you nod your head, um, it means yes. So, there's an expression, give someone the nod. All right, if you give someone the nod, that means that you approve of what they're doing. You're telling them yes. Go ahead and do something. You're giving them permission to do something if you give them the nod. So nod is yes. Think of it this way, another way to think of it. Nod, N-O-D, three letters, yes, three letters. Um, maybe that will help, I don't know. Uh, okay, so shake of the head is no and nod is yes. You hit your head, well, that's pretty 
straightforward. That's usually quite physical. Uh, Carolina, if you scratch your head, what is mm -hmm. the what could you infer if someone scratches his head? Put my fingers into my hair. <laughs> yeah, that's how to do it. But if um, if I say he scratched his head, what probably can I infer about him? Bob scratched his head. What can I infer about Bob? How is Bob he... feeling? Okay. Crazy. Crazy? Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Wait a minute. Time out. All right. Okay. Uh, what can you infer about the way I feel? Uh, you are thinking. Thinking, or I'm confused. Very good, Carvalho. Right. If somebody... Sometimes in writing, when you're reading, you know, he scratched his head. And that's all it will say. It won't say he was confused and he scratched his head, just he scratched his head. In English, we automatically infer that means he was confused. Okay, so this is shake your head. No. Nod your head. Yes. All right. Ow. Hit your head. <laughs> okay. That's it. Okay, let's move on. Uh, all right. Uh, hang on. Let me throw the screen share back up here. Okay. Da, da, da. Uh, all right. Uh, B. Uh, Carvalho. Comb your brush, your wash, your dye, your lose your. Brush. Brush teeth. Okay, but do you comb your teeth? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, teacher. I don't don't know this word. Or dye your teeth. Okay, well, what else do you brush besides your teeth? I'm sorry, teacher. What other part of your body do you brush? Um, yes, you brush your teeth, but what else? Here you go. Um, ha hair. Hair, okay. Comb, you comb your hair. That's the one thin uh, device, a comb. It has it has teeth, okay? Usually, I don't know if it's true anymore, but men comb their hair, women brush their hair. A brush is more of a round object that has what are called bristles. A comb has teeth. Okay, a comb is flat. You can put it in your back pocket. Okay. You, you comb your hair. Brush your hair. Obviously, you can wash your hair. Carvalho, any idea what dye your hair? What that means? Mm, it's, is it like to, to change the color of Very your good. hair? Yeah, that's it. So, of course, you probably wouldn't dye your teeth. <laughs> that would be really weird. Uh, okay. Um, lose, of course, you could lose your teeth, but you lose your your hair. Carvalho, what is the word to describe you if you lose all of your hair? All of you. Uh, I don't know it in English, teacher. You don't? Okay. Uh, bald. Bald. Yes. And by the way, uh, you can, the verb, you can go bald. He went bald in his 30s, for example. Means when he was in his 30 years old, he went, he lost all his hair. He went bald in his 30s. Okay, so, yeah, you know, hair. All right, moving on. All righty, Philip. Philip, clean or brush? Uh, Toots. Okay, well, teeth. Hopefully you have more than one. <laughs> All right. Okay, you brush your teeth every day, several times a day. You clean your teeth. 
Now, when we say clean your teeth, what do we mean, Philip? Or you have your teeth clean. What am I talking about if I'm saying, oh, I have to have my teeth cleaned on Monday? That means you see a dentist. Very good. That is correct. Uh, that's right. Uh, you can do a lot of other things with your teeth. Of course, you can lose your teeth. <laughs> Uh, you can pull your teeth out, or the dentist will, hopefully. All right. Uh, someone may ask if you have all your teeth. Uh, Philip, Absolute, you, absolutely, you, I have all the thirty-two. Very good. Do you have any fillings? You know what fillings are. I don't know fillings. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, fillings in your teeth, uh, that's where the doctor drills out a little bit because your teeth have a cavity. All right. A cavity is mm -hmm. literally what a cavity is. A cavity means a hole. Mm -hmm. So when your tooth has a hole because it's rotten, because it's decayed, uh, you have a cavity and the, the doctor, well, the dentist drills it out and he fills it with I don't know what some kind of metal or I'm not sure actually I don't have any problem with my teeth that's great lucky guy and then of course if you if your teeth are not real what are they called Philip mm, they call them uh, the fake, fake teeth <laughs> no, we don't. We call them false teeth in English. Uh, okay, false. false teeth. It's uh, not, not fake. <laughs> not not fake teeth. That sounds funny. I don't know why, but it sounds funny for English speakers. False teeth, basically a compound noun. False teeth, very specific meaning, and we always say that. We don't say artificial teeth. We don't say fake teeth. False teeth. Okay. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Okay, Jonathan, what do you blow? <laughs> your nose. Blow your nose. Okay. <laughs> what else? What other disgusting things can you do with your nose? <laughs> uh, um, yeah. clean them. <laughs> I don't know how to say that in English. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's right. Whoever said that, thank you. Carolina, yeah, you can, can pick it? your nose. Um, can how, how do you say? How, how do you say? <laughs> pick your nose. Pick your nose. Pick your nose. Here, I'll write it. And by, yeah, pick and by, your nose. Okay. What do you pick your nose for? What are you getting? <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't know the booger. name. <laughs> oh, they're boogers. Ew, it's a booger. Oh, gross. That's disgusting. <laughs> and then, and then we we eat them. No, don't go there. <laughs> I wasn't gonna go there. Okay. Ah, uh, yuck. Um, okay. Uh, as uh, we have an expression in English. You can pick your friends, and you can pick your nose. You just can't pick your friend's nose. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, uh, okay, dentures. Yes, Jonathan, that is the more formal um, word for false teeth. Dentures with an S, as Jonathan has written it, dentures. Not denture with no S. We, that doesn't exist. Dentures. <laughs> Carvalho Booger Man? <laughs> What's Booger Man? I have to ask. Wait a minute. Booger Man? What's that game? Carvalho? Super Nintendo, teacher. What's that? Super Nintendo, it's a, a game. Okay. It's Is it a, like a tag game? It's, a, it's the name of the, the hero of this game. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a comic game. Really? Okay. Yes. That's funny. <laughs> I'd never heard of that. That's, that's cool. All right. That's very funny. Uh, okay. 
Moving along, back to... Oh, Felipe is not here anymore. Must have went to bed. Carlos. Carlos. Letter E. You open, close, rub, and ruin your... Uh, your muff. Mm, yeah. I don't think so. What do we got left here? No mouth. Rub your... Open your... Close your... Your eyes. Very good. Okay, there you go. All right. Uh, open your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes and go to sleep. Uh, also, as we mentioned earlier, you can wink your eye. Yeah. You can't wink your eyes because you only wink one. Wink your eye or blink your eyes. Uh, rub your eyes. When do you rub your eyes, Carlos? I mean, yes, Carlos. When would it be normal to rub your eyes? Carlos, are you there? Yeah. Uh, is it, is it normally to rub uh, our eyes when we have uh, infections? <laughs> okay, that's true. It's normal, not normally. You can say we normally rub, adverb, verb, normally rub, or it is normal to rub your eyes. Yeah, when you have an infection, that's absolutely true, or something gets in your eye, like a piece of dust or sand, or when you're tired, of course, you might rub your eyes. Uh, okay, you can ruin your eyes. This also co-locates... Ruin your eyes. Uh, Carlos, did your mother ever tell you? Don't read in the dark. You'll ruin your eyes. Or don't watch TV so close to the set. You'll ruin your eyes. <laughs> or other such. Or don't cross your eyes. <laughs> you, yeah. you'll, get, you'll get stuck. Did your mother yeah. tell you that? Yeah, yeah. my mom... Send me, send me the <laughs> that I I am when I I I am studying English by internet uh, internet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, you you ruin your eyes with the yeah. With, <laughs> but that that's is. What moms, that's what moms do, right? <laughs> you don't believe it? I yeah I don't I don't either. Uh, okay. Um, all right. Now we're going to use uh, forms. We might have to say instead of your, my, or her, or his, we may have to alter the verb, turned, past tense, will turn, whatever. Uh, let's see if we can use some of these co-located phrases, verb and object noun, to complete the sentence. Keiko, number one. Keiko? Mm -hmm. I need a new image. I'm thinking of dyeing my hair blonde. Very good. Uh, blonde, of course, is the yellowy color. Blonde is very specific. We really only use it for hair. Um, okay. It might also be common to say, I'm thinking of going blonde. Uh, just... Another way that we express the idea that we're going to dye our hair. I think I have going blonde. It could also be possible. But Keiko is absolutely correct. I'm thinking of dyeing my hair blonde. Uh, okay. Very good. Marcus, number two. Number two. I am sure I will be bald by the time I am 30. My dad... Like all, like is him twisters. Twenty. Uh, Twenty. Twenty. Yeah. Um, I don't know the terms. Okay. <laughs> Remember we talked about bald earlier in the class. It's, he has n no hair. 
Lohair, yes. Yes. So he thinks he will be bald by the time I'm 30, 30 years old. Because, why? Because my dad, verb, all blank in his 20s. Okay. So to be bald means... No? No. Um, he lost... My dad lost all his hair. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, my dad lost out out hair in his twenties. Okay. In his twenties. Twenties. So in his twenties, when my dad was twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine. That's your twenties. Twenties. Your... Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Thank you, Heidi. Number three. My dentist keeps telling me to brush my teeth up and down and well at the, uh, from side to side. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Keeps telling me, and uh, I... Th good job adding the to. Tell you to do something, it really should be there. He keeps telling me to brush my teeth up and down, side to side. All right. Right. Toothbrushing lessons. All right. Very good. Carolina, number four. When I came off my motorbike, I hit my head hard on the road, even though I was wearing my crash helmet. Okay. Very good. Uh, Carolina, you ever hit your head? Always. <laughs> <laughs> always. <laughs> I always use my helmet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. If you say so. Okay. All day, every day, you wear a helmet, just in no, case. No, when no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. Okay, moving on. Carvalho, number five. <laughs> Pretty much exactly what Carlos said earlier. Carvalho. Teacher, um, I don't remember. I don't remember what what you use in this sentence. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, Carlos said it earlier. His mom told him that uh, if he keeps studying English online, using the computer screen all the time. It's just something your mother says. Everybody's mother says, but nobody else. Okay, if you read in the dark, you will do this. If you sit too close to the TV screen, you will... It's like blind. It's... Yes, okay. That's the idea. Uh, you'll ruin your eyes. Um, okay. Probably not you'll go blind. <laughs> Maybe, but possibly. It would be okay. Uh, actually, you go blind. You be, you. Over time, you can't see anymore. You go blind. Uh, or you ruin your, uh, ruin your eyesight. Or ruin your eyes. Any, okay. any of those ways. All right. Uh, okay, something all mothers are required to say. Philip, number six. Yes, yeah, teacher. In our culture, nodding heads means you agree, while uh, checking, checking it usually means no. This isn't the Yeah. This isn't uh, the same in all cultures. Okay. Definitely got the principal idea correct. Um, you can say it like this, Philip. In our culture, um, nodding, your he nodding your head means you agree. Uh, see, notice that we have you over here. 
Uh, while shaking your head usually means no. Or you can you can use pronouns as you did. Shaking it usually means no. That was fine, the end part. I just want to point out that often when we're talking in general, uh, things like giving instructions or advice, totally in general, not to a specific person, we frequently use you. Even uh, if I'm explaining a recipe, okay, you add the eggs one at a time and mix them in. All right. I mean you, the broader you in general. This is very common in English. To use the pronoun you in these situations. Okay, shake and nod. You got that right, though. Uh, Jonathan, number seven. <laughs> uh, have you got a paper hanky? I need to blow my nose. I have. I hate having a cold. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. We blow our nose a lot when we have a cold. Uh, what, what is a hanky? hanky? Yeah, I was Pinky gonna. Hanky. I was going like, to address like, that. Yeah. Like a like a napkin. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's right. Hanky is slang uh, for handkerchief. Okay, which people used to, at least used to use, to blow their nose. Um, even my grandfather always had a handkerchief, which I always found to be kind of disgusting. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, it's it's like a, a piece of cloth. That, that's right. Uh, so a paper hanky, <laughs> frankly... Americans would never say a paper hanky. I would say a Kleenex, which is one of those words. It's actually a brand name for a product. However, we use it uh, to talk about, all right, basically a paper that you use to blow your nose. Uh, an American would never say paper hanky. That must be very British. An American would definitely say a Kleenex. Or a yeah. tissue, maybe. Okay. I understand that. Um, I say I say the, sa the same with the uh, uh, um, teeth past 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 teeth. Uh, um, we say Colgate. Oh really? Toothpaste. To the, really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's you, funny. For some reason. <laughs> okay. Well, all right. Yeah, the, sometimes this happens in English. We use the actual brand name, like Kleenex, for the kind of tissue. All right. We use Pampers for diapers for babies. It's very yeah. common. You go to the store for Pampers. All right. I have never heard an American say paper hanky. <laughs> Honestly, never in my life. Uh, okay. Uh, anyway, moving on. Um, Carlos, back to you. Number eight. Uh, are you trying it uh, because you are not sure what to do or because it's itchy? Are you what? Are you trying? 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 trying. Uh, not. I don't think so. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, this is the uh, scratching your head. Uh, I think this is the uh, <laughs> this is this one, Carlos. Are you scratching your head because you don't know what to do, or because it's itchy? If something's itchy, like a mosquito bites you, it's itchy, so you want to scratch it, but. Maybe your head is itchy, but maybe you're just confused about what to do. So you scratch your head. Um, we, we actually use this. Uh, we, we, we actually can use this to talk about a situation. I don't know. The way he acted at the party really made me scratch my head. All right. Didn't make me itchy. It made me confused. Um, I don't know. That meeting just had me scratching my head. Okay, we can actually use, express the idea we were confused by using this phrase. Um, okay, I uh, hope you learned some interesting 
collocations and verbius with these parts of the face and, and head. But I'm out of time, so thank you, everyone, very much for your participation. Mm -hmm.